Welcome, Welcome to, to The Working, Working Families Lobby Corps Legislative Update Video Signing Die Edition Solidarity This is David Fernandez, Communications Director for the Florida AFL-CIO with the final 2014 session update. With the fate of several important working family issues hanging in the balance, excitement and anticipation ran through the halls of the Capitol on the last week of session. First up, pension deform legislation. The controversial bills that would radically change the Florida retirement system and risk the economic security of Florida's vital public workers reached the House and Senate floors. In a deceptive strategy divide and conquer the coalition of organizations fighting against the measures, Senator Gates attempted to waive the rules on the Senate floor to combine their radical changes to the pension program with the House's bill that included favorable changes to local plans. But senators against any changes were ready to act. The motion to combine the bills was shot down by a vote of 21 to 15. Realizing support wasn't there in the Senate for the overhaul, the bills were temporarily postponed and were not brought up again for consideration. A massive victory for Florida's public workers. Pension deform failed. Activists from across the state held their collective breath as the historic vote on tuition equity for undocumented students reached the Senate floor on Thursday. After passing the House, students from across the state packed the gallery to watch the Senate's emotional debate on the bill. Why wouldn't we want somebody who could come through our schools and change the world? You know what? The next Google, the next Yahoo, the next Facebook, the next Twitter, because if you look at all those companies, they were created by young individuals. Don't we want an our schools that sort of intellectual property it's not our responsibility to make immigration policy but it's our responsibility to do what's right for the people we represent all of them by a vote of 26 to 13 the senate passed hb 851 which was then sent back to the house for a quick supportive vote and now heads to the governor's desk to be signed into law. Accessible higher education is no longer just a dream for the thousands of undocumented students who've called Florida home. It's now a reality. In a late last minute tangle, the Florida legislature radically expanded the controversial corporate tax credit voucher program on Friday night. Early on in session, the Senate voucher bill was withdrawn. Weeks later, it was amended onto an unrelated bill SB 1512, dealing with personal accounts for disabled students. Then, on just hours before the end of session, when that bill failed to garner enough votes, it was sneakily put onto SB 850, a very unrelated bill dealing with school improvement programs and digital learning. The bill passed with three Democrats in support, Senator Ring, Soto, and Margolis. And then, this was sent back to the House at 8 p.m. where there was a heated debate. Because it couldn't get passed on its own merits, the voucher expansion is now weighing down what is an otherwise decent bill. It's a poison pill. It's bad policy. And please don't tell us this is about the kids. If this truly is for the children, you would ensure they are getting the best education they deserve and not simply relying on wishful thinking. The education of our children should not be promoted and sold like a product in a marketplace. As public servants, we have to be fiscally responsible and demand accountability because these children are the future of Florida and the future of America. If parents want to send their children to for-profit private schools, they already have that option. So why should we all have to pay for it? On behalf of the Florida taxpayers, I have to say, go pick somebody else's pocket. The bill passed the House with a partisan vote. This is a huge loss for our public schools, done in a very underhanded way, showing the lengths these powerful forces will go to privatize our public education. But wait, what about the zombie-like, back-from-the-dead wage theft legislation working families have been fighting against all session? Well, let's just say these bills found their final resting place this session and activists helped bury the grave. SB 926, 
the big retail-backed bill that would make it more difficult for victims of wage theft to recover their stolen wages was never brought up for a formal vote and was buried on the Senate floor. Here are the results of the priority working family bills this session. Lobby Corps activists held strong all session and on the last week they shared their experiences. This week was very important for us to be up here. The retirement system was attacked again and it was very evident yesterday in the Senate that if we had not been there that they would have pushed through with changes to the retirement system. It's very important that we come up here. It's very important that the legislators know we're watching them. I learned how important it is for everyone to be involved. Even if the pension doesn't necessarily affect your family, it affects us all. How the state goes is how locals go, and we all need to be affected. I mean, it's great that everybody comes up here. You have um, not only us that represent bus drivers, but you have the FOP, you have the electrical workers, uh, everybody, uh, teachers from all different unions, and we all fight here, not just for our issues, but we fight for all of our issues. And so I encourage everybody to come up here and continue this fight. We would like to thank the hundreds of activists who called their legislators, lobbied at the Capitol, and took action on all the important issues this session. The power and presence you displayed will be felt at the Capitol long after Sine die. Yes we can, yes we did, and yes we will again next year. Solidarity.